Hello, Resumex family. First resume conference. So, so happy to be here. It is a pleasure to be invited to speak to you. My name is Dr. Omer Hirsch. I am a chiropractor, and we're going to go right into the presentation because I promised this is going to be short and to the point. So, I'm going to share my screen with you, and here we are. So, this is me, Resumex Paint Tuner Pro, the conference. <clears throat> I am a chiropractor living in Israel. I work in Israel. My practice's name is Life in Balance because I believe in um, balance in life and life in balance. Makes perfect sense, right? So I'd like to thank you again for uh, taking part of this conference and uh, listening to what I have to say and investing your time and money in uh, sharing this, uh, this uh, movement that uh, Sharik and his group, uh, his team has um, started. And I know this, is, uh, this conference is mostly about the Resimax Paint Tuner Pro, but obviously you're going to hear a lot of information that um, kind of revolves around it. And I hope that what I have to say is going to be uh, interesting enough for you uh, to stay awake throughout the 10 or 15 minutes we're going to be together. Just a little bit about me, uh, just so you know who you're talking to, all righty? So this is my name, Omer Hirsch. It's spelled this way, just this the way it is, okay? Just live with it. <laughs> I am married for 15 years and a bit to the same woman. Uh, it's pronounced Nitsan. I know it's hard, but just, again, you have to live with it. Um, this is us at a Queen reunion, or not reunion, uh, show about six years ago, I think. It was awesome. We do have three bandits and one princess, and here they are about two years ago, and this is all of us just now, and basically this is the reason why I'm here, this is the reason basically why I'm assuming all of you are um, sitting uh, at home or at the conference room, uh, because you have people you love that you want to help, and um, so always remember why you're doing what you're doing, it'll help you, it'll help you keep motivated and, um, and push forward, all right? I'm a chiropractor. I am special. I have been specializing in functional neurology since 2009. I have taken the fellowship exam in functional in developmental disorders back in 2018. I have kept it ever since. Um, I do present and I do lecture in uh, in various places. I have uh, two or three other businesses, so I'm an entrepreneur as well. Uh, I do teach or will be teaching. Sorry, we we postponed the beginning of the course to uh, October. Um, the Developmental Functional Neurology course um, in conjunction with the Wingate Academic College here in Israel. We'll be teaching it in Hebrew, so that's going to be awesome. And I'm a member of several organizations, including IAFNR and uh, several others. So, that's me. And basically, this entire conference revolves around vibration. All right? And vibration is a very powerful tool. All right? um, there are many forms of vibration. Right. I'm just going to name a few just so to keep your mind open to it. Light is vibration. Sound is vibration. Obviously, touch has vibration. Everything in life has vibration. I think even um, Albert Einstein said so. And if he said so, it must be true, right? So there's lots of other ways uh, that, we, that vibration comes to uh, manifest itself in our lives. But neuronal activity is vibration, brain activity is vibration. Everything in our life basically revolves around different frequencies of vibration. And what I want to talk to you is how we can harness the specific types of vibration available to us to um, help people get better. So what I'm going to be sharing with you over the next five to seven minutes maybe is a few clinical gems and logic that I have um, gathered and, and put together from various sources throughout uh, the years that I've been practicing and show you maybe a few examples of how I'm using um, different tools, including the Resimax um, in practice. And I will be talking about a few others kind of without showing you the videos because um, they are a little more uh, sensitive as far as um, exposure. So we have to remember the hemispheric imbalance is always our guide. So if my right hemisphere is not working as well as my left hemisphere, I need to consider that everything that I want to do is going to be more designated and more um, oriented into activating that right hemisphere because we want to encourage more neuroplasticity processes in that right hemisphere. Now, 
that may not be enough because we want to be as specific as we can because the more specific we are, the better our results will be. If I need to activate the person's right orbital frontal cortex and I'm activating kind of generally the entire right hemisphere, it's not going to be near as effective as if I do things that are much more specific to that right orbital frontal cortex. Right? And that's just obviously an example. And we have to remember that different networks, different um, um, skills have different networks associated with them. And sometimes we'll want to activate two or three or four regions in our brain to, again, um, achieve the best results that we can. All right. So an example would be if I want to activate the right orbital frontal cortex, a lot of times I'll want to activate that right temporal lobe versus activating that right parietal lobe, which works more with the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Okay. If I want to activate my frontal lobes, I'll maybe want to activate my cerebrocerebellum, so the lateral side of our cerebellum. And if I want to activate maybe more the uh, uh, parietal lobe, maybe I'll want to activate more the spinal cerebellum. Okay, so we always have to think geographically or anatomically and figure out how specific can we be with our intervention. Okay, we want to consider left versus right. We want to consider front versus back. And within each lobe, we sometimes want to consider the front of the frontal lobe or the back of the frontal lobe, etc. Top versus bottom. How powerful our stimulation is, is sometimes critical. So let me give you an example, which I've been using the Resimax for. I have a patient who is nonverbal yet. He's four years old. He's nonverbal. And I was using the Resimax, the, the Resimax 1, um, to stimulate his rooting reflex. So we're just doing this way, just, just um, touching his um, cheek and his lips just a little bit with that Resimax. And I was doing it on the lowest, uh, lowest um, speed the lowest uh, grade of the Resimax, and still his response was crazy. Like he was, he would try to eat that Resimax, that, that those blue tongs, right? He would try to eat them like after the second or third scrape. Once we got the the Resimax two, and I was able to downgrade the intensity, I was able to go all the way up to the highest um, power grade for the the highest vibration in the lower intensity and i was still able to go for close to a minute and and get a little bit of a, a of a reaction so we were doing something but it wasn't overwhelming him okay not only was he was he trying to eat it he would get super 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 uh, agitated and upset and he would you know very quickly start to cry and then everything else i tried to do was just it was just overwhelming for him just with doing just a little bit of that with too much vibration Right? So we have to always consider how powerful our stimulation is and kind of gauge the endurance our patients uh, have for that stimulation. And we have to remember that everything has a somatosensory distribution. So sometimes I'll do something with the hand and they can't handle it. But if I go and I do it in the foot, maybe they can handle it now and I can slowly um, move forward or move on, move, move up towards the, the hand, or same goes with, with the face. Maybe I can do it just with the V2, so the, the central part of the face, and then go to V1, or the other way around. Just Maybe just go on the, on, the, on the lower jaw, on the mandible, and then maybe go up to the entire face. So we have to consider that those have uh, um, different distributions, and um, different areas may have different um, endurance levels. And... <clears throat> We have to remember that when we consider distribution, the cranial nerves have a very, very significant amount of information coming in from them. So I strongly recommend know your cranial nerves and use them. Use them uh, as much as you can because they're very powerful um, and they can help us uh, achieve results that we sometimes won't be able to achieve just using the, the, the limbs or the torso um, and maybe do it with something else. So co-activate. So sometimes I'll... I'll do the hand and the foot or the face and the hand or the body and something else. So do more than one thing at a time. A lot of times, if they can handle it, if their endurance is high enough, then, up, then usually you will get better results. And if you can do several kinds of stimulation, so vibration and light and sound and cognitive and something else, it, it gets very, very, very powerful. And the chances of you creating a neuroplastic change 
are a lot higher. I want to go back to endurance for just one moment and remind you all that the best way for us to track whether or not they can, they can handle it is the sympathetic response. If they're starting to sweat, if their pupils, if their pupils um, um, blow up, if they, um, if they, if they, if their, if their skin color changes, if you're taking blood pressure and pulse, if those change, if they start to to hyperventilate, all those give us great clues that we're doing too much and we have to slow down and maybe next time not even get to that uh, that much. Okay. So, just some examples from my office that I want to share with you. So this little kid is four and a bit and he's got really low muscle tone and he is not able to jump. He's not able to stand on one foot. And what we have here is one Resimax on his left hand and one Resimax on his left foot. And I'm slowly just going to let go and we're going to see if he can actually hold himself up. And I'm just guiding him as to what he needs to do. And whoa. So that was the first time he was actually able to hold himself up. We actually did it again. Um, we actually did it again uh, about two minutes later, but the dad forgot to uh, video it. And so uh, he was able to stand for about five or six seconds that time. He was able to stand for about five or six seconds that time. So that was really cool. Now let's take a look at this guy. All right, so in this one, what we're seeing here is he's got a Resimax on his left hand and he also had a Resimax, I don't know if you saw, he's got a Resimax on his back but on the left side. All right, he's walking on a, on a two by four, he's going backwards and forwards, he has no sock on his left foot, he's got the eye lights on his eyes with the lights flashing on the left side, um, the left uh, visual field, and we're going to keep watching this for a second, and if you can see, he's clapping. Now he's clapping to the sound of the tone pacer running in his ears. And those, uh, the tone pacer, if you don't know it, is, a, is an app that has vibration as part of its sound application. All right, so he's got vibration going to his left side and then the right side and it's different tones. He's got 128 hertz going to the left and then 528 hertz going to the right. And they, they um, and he only has, he's supposed to clap only when we are um, in the left ear. All right, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. Let's do another one with the two by four. All right, so this this time, what he has to do is he has to clap his hand, kind of like we do with the interactive metronome, but what he has on is the uh, tone pacer again. And this time, he doesn't have the Resimax on his back. The reason for that was too much for him. He couldn't handle it. When I put it on his back, he was too uh, it was too tickling for him. So I decided to just take that off and, you know, work with his endurance, okay? All right. So again, endurance is important. Let's do another one. So again, with vibration. All right, so we've got 35 hertz going on here, but he's standing on, on this soft pillow. He's standing on this soft... He's standing on, his, on this soft pillow here, um, and all he has to do basically is stand, all right? But I did want to add that, see, when he's not walking, he can handle, it's the same kid from before, when he's not walking, he can handle the Resimax in his back. It's interesting, when he was on the 2x4, he couldn't handle the, the Resimax on his back. He still has the, the, tone, the, 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 the tone pacer, he's still got the glasses, but now that he's standing, he can get, he can handle the, um, he can handle the, the vibration on his back, all right? All right, so there's, I think there's one more I wanted to show you. Um, yeah, there's one more, here it is. Okay, so here we wanna activate his uh, cerebellum and work on his fixation. So he's got uh, a laser um, he's wearing on his eyes, uh, glasses that have a laser pointer on them. And he's gotta move that laser on that figure eight as he tracks with his finger as he's listening to the tone to the tone pacer and has the eyeglasses on, you can see that he's getting a little bit of that head tilt. It means it's a little difficult for him to do it. But uh, about three or four weeks ago, he couldn't even um, 
focus that light in one spot, not to mention move it around. All right, so he has to move his head to move the light, and he has to track with his finger as he moves his head. So this is very complex, and he's got that vibration coming in all the time to increase the input coming in from that limb as he works on uh, on his balance because he was standing on that foam and doing that complex movement that he has to do really slowly, all right, because, sorry, he has to do really slowly because we want to activate that cerebellum even harder, so we want to do things in a very controlled manner, so it becomes very, very, very profound, all right, so those are just a few examples, and I haven't even gotten into all the stuff that we can do with primitive reflexes and, um, and different uh, co-activations with laser or with electricity. Um, I just wanted to show you some really basic stuff that we can do anywhere, even at home, um, to really push the brain harder than just doing it with the simple tasks. And it's just by happenstance that everything here was on the left side because most of my patients are on the spectrum, so their right hemisphere is a little weaker than their left. So, in conclusion, be specific when you can. As, and as specific as you can, alrighty? Go to the patient's endurance, not beyond. Do not, do not cross that barrier because, or that, that boundary, because then you just, you're just gonna start, you're just gonna start wasting time. Both yours and the patient, they're not gonna have fun, they're not gonna enjoy themselves, and you actually uh, may uh, kill a few neurons on the way. All right, look for those sympathetic signs, all right? Upper versus lower limb. I do want to say one word about it because I haven't said it before. The upper limb has a tendency to be more associated with the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. All right? And the lower limb has a tendency to be more associated with the orbital frontal cortex. All right? We already talked about the association between the temporal lobe and the orbital frontal and the parietal lobe and the dorsolateral. But now I wanted to um, bring a little bit of that in. So that's why you saw sometimes that I would choose to maybe use the hand and not the foot or not, or not the leg. Um, sometimes I'll use both. Sometimes I'll use just the leg. All right. Um, sometimes I'll put the vibration plate as the leg stimulation and the Resimax as the hand stimulation, or I'll just skip the hand stimulation and just let that vibration plate from the bottom give me the vibration that I need for the leg. All right. So do take into account upper limb versus lower limb. So again, upper limb is dorsolateral, lower limb is more orbital, uh, and if you want to push that cerebellum more, that central, uh, those central um, muscles and, and integrators, then we want to use um, that vibration on the body, which is what I love, the, the little strap, uh, the belt strap um, thing that we have there. I don't know how to call it. <laughs> All right, co-activation, co-activation, do more than one thing at one time. The more you can put in together that pushes the same regions that you want to activate, the stronger the activation, the higher the chances the neuroplasticity is going to um, happen in the long run. Like you saw, we did a lot of things at the same time that all support the same mechanism that we want to push forward. Alrighty? And if you can add things like laser to that, if you can add things like uh, maybe cognitive stuff to that, that's even more powerful. All right, cool. And I right now have three Resimax devices that I work with. Sometimes I'll, I'll have the patient, I have some of my patients have their own devices at home. Sometimes I'll have them bring theirs from home and we'll have four Resimaxes working uh, on the same person at the same time because we want vibration in different different types. So maybe we'll want the red um, the red uh, uh, setting. I like that one for for uh, most of my um, right brain kids because it's a little it's a little uneven. Un it's not it's not like the blue or the green where it goes up and down. It kind of changes a little bit uh, in between, so it's not as uh, predictable. Uh, I like the green and the blue for the left brain uh, activation. Um, and so sometimes I'll have one on the leg and one on the hand. One I'll be doing, you know, a rooting reflex activation, and, 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 and the fourth one will just go on the back or things like that. So we'll do a lot of things at the same time. So the more res, the merrier. Um, I hope this was interesting for you. I hope I wasn't speaking too fast, and uh, I hope you were enjoying the conference, and thanks again for having me. This is uh, everything you need to know about me as far as my contact information. Feel free to reach out, and if you have any questions or you just want to talk about anything, 
um, then you know, shoot me an email, find me on Facebook, give me a call, WhatsApp works, whatever you want. All right. So again, have a wonderful, wonderful conference, and um, and you know, make the world more balanced because you know we need balance in life and we need our life in balance. Love you all. Thanks.